Hi everyone, how are you? I'm Jessica, welcome back. So the past two days we've been talking about flying geese and we're gonna do one more iteration of that today. So today I'm gonna show you how I make the four at a time flying geese without marking any lines. The results are gonna yield the same as yesterday, but you're not gonna have to take the time to mark those three lines on every single one of your small squares. So let's get to it. I have the same size pieces that I had yesterday. I have one five and a quarter square, and then I have four two and seven eighths inch squares. Now this is gonna make four two and a half by four and a half inch flying keys. So we're gonna do it much the same as we did yesterday, just we're not gonna draw the lines. And um, these lines on my table are what I'm going to use in place of those. So I mentioned these before in other videos, but if you didn't hear me talk about them, these three lines, I drew them on this uh, table for my machine and what I did was I used a ruler let me just do a little quick demo I used a ruler here I put my needle down and I used my ruler and I got it right up next to my needle and then I just used another ruler on the side here you're not gonna be able to see it but I just wanted to make sure I was actually making this straight so just double check that your line is straight the entire way down and then um, I, with a Sharpie, I marked this line. When that line was dry, then I, you don't need your needle down anymore, so I just put my needle back up. Um, then I took the quarter inch line and I put it on the line I just drew and I drew another one. And then when that one was dry, I did the same thing. I took my quarter inch line, I put it on the middle one and I drew a third. And these lines are super handy dandy for making these four at a time flying geese without marking the lines. Without this or some other kind of marking tool, you wouldn't be able to do it. So the first thing that you do is just line your squares up. Now we're doing this the same as yesterday. I put this top one on first and I made sure that I was even um, with the edges up here. And then I put the bottom one on, making sure, again, I was even with these edges. We're crossing in the middle, um, like we did yesterday. If we had the lines, they'd be extending here, but we don't. Now what I'm gonna do is I am going to take my um, block and I'm just gonna line it up with my quarter of an inch line. And I can follow that on my machine bed, like all the way to the back. So I just wanna make sure that my points uh, this top point, and you can't see it exactly. Let me just back you up a little. This bottom point, it's going to be right on my quarter of an inch line, okay? So it's not the line that's even with the needle. It's a line that's a quarter of an inch over. And once I'm sure that I'm a quarter of an inch at the top and the bottom, then I'm going to just lower my foot. And we're going to sew. This one is going to be the line that's a quarter inch from the center line. We're gonna sew the left one first here. So I'm feeding this through, and as I feed this through, I'm making sure my point is staying on this center line. So you can see it now that I'm coming up. My point is on this center line, and that's marking the quarter of an inch. And I'm gonna keep doing this till that one's sewn. Okay, now after I have that line sewn, I'm gonna turn my piece around and this time I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna line let me back you up again I'm gonna line the point up with the middle line on both sides and now this time this one we just sewed is gonna be lined up with this third line and we're gonna be stitching this one so um, we're kind of going like one step at a time here making sure everything is lined up and now I don't have my fabric all the way up so I just like lift my foot and then I'm gonna start sewing this. Now, as I sew this, you're gonna see when I come up here that the point is on the middle line and this sewn line is on the third line. And then I'll just let you see. And then we just sew this through. Now this just takes a tiny bit um, of estimation at this next part. So, so our lines are perfect. They're exactly how they should be. Now we have to cut in the middle. Since we don't have that line to cut on, we just eyeball the middle line. If you didn't want to eyeball that middle line, what you could do is go with a roller and go over to your um, cutting mat, line up the quarter inch line on your seam, and then do a rotary cutter down the middle. But um, I'm just gonna like eyeball it with my scissors. So we're going straight down the middle. 
And the more you do these, like I said yesterday, the better you get. This is a technique that definitely has to be practiced. Um, but so now I have these two pieces that we had yesterday when we were finished. We're gonna open these up and, and complete the sewing. I'm gonna finger press this open here on this first unit, and then we're gonna take uh, one of our remaining squares and line up the bottoms here, the two sides, this side and this side. And once we have this laying straight, we're gonna make sure our points are on the middle line again, and we're gonna sew on the left here. So I'm gonna drop my foot and then I'm just gonna lift it up a little bit just to get it exactly where I want it to be, right there. And then we're just gonna sew down this side. And when we're finished with that, we will turn it around the other way and repeat that same process on the other side. So my point is still on my middle line, my quarter of an inch over from the needle. And as long as that point stays on the center line, you're sewing a quarter of an inch from it. And here is this. Then you can do the rotary cutter if you'd like here to make it exact, or you can estimate it with your scissors. I don't always get it perfect, but I do think for me it's good enough. Um, and then here is one of our flying geese units. Here's another one. And then we just need to finish with this one to get the last two. Okay, and we'll cut these apart. All right, and now we have our four flying geese. So just like yesterday, uh, we're going to just trim these overhangs to get our perfect unit. So I'm just going to use a pair of scissors and... This method is already quick, I think, and by not having to draw those lines, it makes it even quicker. So you can really um, crank out the geese for your quilt. If you have a quilt with a lot of flying geese, this definitely helps make it fast. And you definitely have to get used to not drawing the lines, especially if it's something that you're used to. Um, your eyes are gonna be looking for them and they won't be there, but uh, it's definitely, to me, uh, worth it. And here we have all four of our geese with the overhangs trimmed and ready to be used. So that was pretty quick and easy. If you have any questions on the four at a time method or the four at a time without drawing the lines, just let me know in the comments. Thanks again for following along.